Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a revamped deck tech. On episodes like these, I build a new version of a previous deck tech on the channel. Enough time has passed, so new cards have been printed, and certain cards were reprinted, so we've got plenty of new options for this deck. The budget for this revamped deck tech is going to be $50. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. So the deck that we'll be revamping today is Reaper King. Reaper King came out back on December 22nd of 2018. It's been over a year and there are plenty of new cards to consider. And there's actually even new Reaper King artwork as well. Anyways, Reaper King is a 6-6 Scarecrow with a very unique mana cost. It costs 2 or a white, 2 or a blue, 2 or a black, 2 or a red, and 2 or a green. So it can cost as little as 5 mana or as much as 10. It has other Scarecrow creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1. And whenever another Scarecrow enters the battlefield under your control, destroy target permanent. So although that Anthem effect is nice, it's pretty irrelevant compared to that second effect. Giving all of our Scarecrows destroy target permanent as an ETB is huge. This is a very powerful and deadly effect that we can really abuse in the right deck. The more Scarecrows we have in the deck, the more things we can destroy. One quick note before we jump into this, Reaper King's current price is over $10. That means that it's not going to be included in the overall deck cost, so just keep that in mind. So what's our strategy for this deck? Well, we're going to ramp, fix our mana, and get our commander out quickly. The sooner we get Reaper King out, the more effective all of our Scarecrows become. And again, if we can fix our mana properly, Reaper King can cost as little as 5 mana. And then winning with this deck is pretty simple. We're going to cast and blink Scarecrows as well as Changelings. With those ETBs, we can destroy whatever we want, including lands. Once we're set up properly, it won't take us long to blow up everything we need to to win. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start off with tactic number one, the King Awaits. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get a base land into play tapped. Next up, we've got Fire Seek, which can get us a Plains, Island, Swamp, or Mount into play tapped. And then Rampant Growth can get us any basic into play tapped. Next up, there's Pillar of Origins, which can tap for any color, but we can only spend that mana to cast Scarecrow spells. And then we've got Harrow, which makes us sacrifice one land, but we get two basics into play untapped. Spring Bloom Druid is similar, but those basics come into play tapped. Next up, there's Cultivate, which gets us one basic into play tapped and one into our hand. And then Grow from the Ashes gets us one basic into play untapped or two if we kicked it. Finally, there's Fire Mind Vessel, which comes into play tapped and can tap to add two mana of different colors. But we're not quite done with ramping and fixing our mana just yet. So let's move on to tactic number two, Tend the Fields. We've got some Scarecrows that can help us ramp and fix our mana with Scuttlemutt and Scare Tiller. Scuttlemutt can tap to add one mana of any color. And whenever Scare Tiller becomes tapped, we choose one, we can put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, or we can return target land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Next up, there's Wildfield Scarecrow, which won't ramp us, but it will help us fix our mana. By paying two, we can sacrifice it to search our library for two basics and put them into our hand. And finally, there's Signpost Scarecrow, which can help us filter our mana. By paying two into it, we can add one mana of any color. These Scarecrows can help us either early or later on in the game. Because again, after we get our commander out, our Scarecrows become extremely deadly. So now it's time for us to move on to tactic number three, a scary start. First up, we've got Heap Doll and Jawbone Skullkin, which each just cost one mana. Now, some of these Scarecrows do have other effects, but for the most part, those aren't really too important. The main thing is that we want as many cheap Scarecrows as we can possibly get in the stack. One mana for a 1-1 body that can blow up any permanent when it comes into play is incredible. Our other Scarecrows aren't nearly as efficient, but they're still very effective. So next up, we've got Field Creeper and Jousting Dummy, which each cost two. Some other Scarecrows that cost two are Pilly Pala, Fang Skullkin, and Chainbreaker. Even at three mana, the effect is going to be well worth it, so we're running Wicker Witch, Hoof Skullkin, and Farmstead Gleaner. Also at 3 mana, we've got Lurebound Scarecrow, Tatterkite, and Harvest Hand. And finally, we've got One-Eyed Scarecrow, which is another 3 mana Scarecrow. Again, 3 mana to get a body and to blow up any permanent is a fantastic rate. But technically, we've got some things other than Scarecrows that can do this as well. So let's move on to tactic number 4, Plenty Scary. 
Changelings are huge for a deck like this because they give us a lot more options. Changeling basically means that this card is every creature type no matter where it's at. So for all intents and purposes, changelings are scarecrows. And some of our best changelings are one drops with Universal Automaton, Moth Dust Changeling, and Changeling Outcast. Like I mentioned in the previous tactic, some of these have other effects and abilities, but those really don't matter. The fact that they just blow up things when they come into play is really what we care about. So we're also running some two drops with Woodland Changeling, Imposter of the Six Pride, and Amiiboid Changeling. Also for two mana, we've got Firebelly Changeling, Skeletal Changeling, and Unsettled Mariner. For the Mariner, I will actually mention its effect since it is pretty relevant. It says whenever you or a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one. So essentially it taxes our opponents for targeting us or our things. And finally at three mana, we've got Torian Mauler, which also has a pretty relevant effect. It says whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a plus plus one counter on Torian Mauler. So basically this can get very big very quickly just for sitting on the field. Now outside of these Scarecrows and Changelings, we've also got some other ways to get multiple ETBs out of one card. So now let's move on to tactic number five, twice as frightening. First up, there's Graveshifter, which is a changeling, and when it comes into play, we return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. So it basically lets us cast a Scarecrow or a changeling a second time. Next up, we've got two changelings that have champion a creature with changeling berserker and changeling hero. So essentially, when this creature comes into play, we exile another one of our creatures, and when this creature dies, we get that creature back. It's essentially a delayed blink, so we get that ETB twice. Next up, we've got Wing Rattle Scarecrow and Antler Skullkin, which can double up ETBs with Persist. Wing Rattle Scarecrow has Persist as long as we control a black creature, and again, our commander has black in its cost. And then Antler Skullkin has pay 2, target white creature gains Persist until end of turn. So we can use this to abuse ETBs or even to save our commander as well. One of our best targets for this comes with a regular cohort. It's a 2-2 changeling that makes a 2-2 changeling when it comes into play. So essentially for 4 mana, we get to blow up 2 permanents, which is huge. But we've also got some other ways to abuse our commander's effect too. So now let's move on to tactic number six, Scared to Death. And the first card that we're going to go over in this tactic is actually our Golden Pig. The Golden Pig is going to be our number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Spark Double. Spark Double is a 0-0 zero, zero illusion that costs three and a blue. You may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an initial plus one plus one counter if it's a creature, it enters with an additional loyalty counter if it's a planeswalker, and it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary. Basically, it's a clone that can get around the legendary rule. Our commander is already a force to be reckoned with. Essentially having two Reaper Kings on the field is absurd. Every time a Scarecrow enters the battlefield, we'll blow up two permanents instead of one. This doubles up the effectiveness of the vast majority of our cards. Once we get this down, it's not going to take us very long to close out a game. And that's what makes it the Golden Pig. Another card that we can use to abuse our commander's effect is Mimic Vat. Essentially whenever a creature dies, we can exile it with Mimic Vat and then pay three and tap it to make a copy. Although the copy is going to get exiled at the next end step, we still get that ETB. And that's really all that we care about for this deck. So we're also running Birthing Balance, which we can pay four and tap to make a 2-2 Changeling. A repeatable destroy target permanent effect can be very effective with this deck, but we're also going to need some ways to keep the deck running. So now let's move on to tactic number 7, Cloth and Straw. First up, there's Factor Fiction, which makes us reveal the top 5 cards of our library, and opponent separates those cards into two piles, one of those piles goes into our hand, and the other goes into our graveyard. Next up, we've got some very effective draw spells for this deck, with one with a machine in Rush of Knowledge. One with a machine says draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among artifacts you control, and Rush of Knowledge does the same, but for any permanent. Although our commander can be cast for as little as 5 mana, it technically has a converted mana cost of 10. So with our commander in play, each of these are going to draw us 10 cards. Another way to draw a good amount of cards at once is Return of the Wild Speaker, which says, choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. And then we've got some ways to draw cards based on the number of creatures we control with Shamanic Revelation, Camaraderie, and Collective Unconscious. Shamanic Revelation also has Ferocious, you gain 4 life for each creature you control with power 4 or greater. And then Camaraderie will also gain us 1 life for each creature we control, and it's going to give all of our creatures plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Outside of drawing cards though, we also need some ways to protect our things. So now let's move on to tactic number 8, Hands Off. First up, we've got Padim, Console of Innovation. It says, Artifacts you control have Hexproof, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact for the highest converted mana cost or tied for the highest converted mana cost, draw a card. So this will protect all of our Scarecrows, including our Commander. And thanks to our Commander, it's also going to draw us a card. We've also got a Scarecrow that can help as well with Shell Skulkin. By paying 3, we can give target blue creature Shroud until end of turn. We've also got some ways to deal with a wide variety of spells, so let's move on to our next tactic. And that would be tactic number 9, I said Hands Off. First up, there's Negate, which is going to counter target non creature spell. And then there's Unwind, which is going to counter target non creature spell, and we untap up to three lands. Getting that mana back can come in really handy, especially with some of our next spells. So now let's move on to our final tactic, tactic number 10, No Survivors. First up, we've got two ways to blink two creatures with Ghostly Flicker and Displace. So these not only can save some of our creatures, but they also get us those ETBs again. Blowing up two things at instant speed for three mana is a fantastic deal. We've got some ways to blink our entire team, though, with Planar Guide, Legion's Initiative, and Eerie Interlude. 
By paying three to white and exiling planner guide, we exile all creatures at the beginning of the next end step. All those creatures come back into the battlefield under their owner's control. And then by paying red white, we can exile Legion's initiative to exile all creatures we control at the beginning of the next combat. We return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control and they have haste. An eerie interlude says, exile any number of target creatures you control, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Again, when all those Scarecrows and Changelings come back into play, we can blow up an incredible amount of permanence. We can even take advantage of any Scarecrows or Changelings that have died with Rally of the Ancestors. It costs X white white, and it says return each creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, exile those creatures at the beginning of the next end step, exile Rally of the Ancestors. Again, the only thing we really care about is getting those creatures back for those ETBs. By blowing up our opponent's lands, we can really hamstring them, and then we can pick off whatever permanence we need to finish out the game. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, there's Command Tower, which taps for any color, and Exotic Orchard, which can tap for any color most of the time. Next up, there's Evolving Wilds and Termorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to get a base land into play tapped. And then we're running all five panoramas with Bant, Esper, Grixis, Jund, and Naya. Next up, we've got Warp Landscape, which we can pay two and tap and sacrifice to get a basic into play tapped. And then there's Mirrored Landscape and Blighted Woodland, which we can each sacrifice to get two basics into play. Next up, we've got all five Vivid Lands with Vivid Crank, Vivid Creek, Vivid Grove, Vivid Marsh, and Vivid Meadow. Finally, we're running 19 basic lands, 7 of those can be a forest, 4 will be an island, 4 will be a plains, 2 will be a mountain, and 2 will be a swamp. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Reaper King EDH rec deck will set you back $291.01. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.45. Again, a quick note for both these costs, neither of them include the commander since that commander is over $10. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add in Yark, the desecrated created by taking out Legion's Initiative. And then we'll add in Panoramonicon by taking out Ghostly Flicker. Next up, let's add in Flame Shadow Conjuring by taking out Displays. And then let's add in Minion Reflector by taking out Birthing Bows. Next up, we're adding in Dead Eye Navigator by taking out Planar Guide. And finally, let's add in Rite of Application by taking out Changeling Hero. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.